Drop. Love, I see you later. of the YouTube Web Reality LGBT series, Chasing Dallas, season two, episode four. Now this was a very shady, a very kiki, a very chill episode as well, but you know what, I am here for it all. You know I got the laughs, you know I got the review, you know I got everything for you, and it's gonna be popping. So if you are ready, you know I'm ready. Let's get into it. The show opens up with Reese G, Carrie D, Trey Womack, and King Kane all meeting up at a place called Gators. They're there for some drinks. And they're going to play Trap Bingo. Now, I was very interested in knowing what this Trap Bingo was, but they was not playing it. All we seen was them at the table talking. We didn't see no type of Trap Bingo. Because, baby, I was like, okay. Oh, we be in the trap. We be in the trap. What was the bingo? So I really liked King Kane's confessional look for this scene. He had on his black crown, his black leather crown. His hair looked like it was freshly twisted, freshly moisturized. Like the black in the hair color was popping. Like it was popping. He was all black everything. You cannot go wrong with all black everything. So he had on this like boa type of jacket, sheer mesh thing going on, you know, and he kept, you know, fluffing it up. You know, he was using his hands very much to talk so we could see the fur, so we could see the boa or whatever, the feathers. I also liked Carrie D's confessional look. Now his confessional look looked like he just got a fresh cut a, a low fade, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it looked really nice. Like Carrie D was looking very, you know, suave. So they're just talking, and Reese mentions that he invited Markel, but Markel never returned his text, so he doesn't know if there's any type of, you know, problem right there. Carrie's like, well, there might be. You know, we met up a while ago, and your name came up, and he was kind of going a little bit straight. So, Carrie was just telling him the whole situation, and so Reese was like, oh, really? He sees me as an associate, not a friend? So, once Reese hears that, then he starts to throw a little shade at Markel, saying, oh, well, you can't tell Markel nothing anyway. He cannot hold your business. If I tell him this, everybody else is going to know. But my thing is, isn't that what people have been saying about Reese? Isn't that the whole big thing with him and Aubrey? Like Aubrey saying Reese went back and said something. I, I don't know. It's just like the pop calling the kettle black. And King Kane jumps in and he's like, well, why would you even bring a replacement back anyway? If you guys have seen King Kane's reviews, because he does a review chasing Dallas, he did mention that Markel is a replacement. He was never supposed to be on season one. They had a chef on there, and apparently he was too booked and busy. He couldn't make it to the show, so they brought in Markel. So that's why he was like, why did you bring a replacement back anyway? Child. <laughs> After that whole conversation is over, King Kane lets them know he's having a lingerie party. Everyone has to come in something Sexy, no one pieces, nothing like that. So then Reese's like, oh, you know, that's right in my alley. I like wearing thongs. And so then they're gonna cut, they're gonna cut to Trey laughing in the confessional, like, listen, don't be making it look like Trey being shady. Carrie, he's like, in his confessional, he was like, I ain't really wanna go to the party because you know. I am really lingerie ready, and I look like I feel you, boo. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want to show up in no lingerie, and we got, you know, a couple extra pounds. You know what I'm talking about? Like, but I mean, you can still come in some lingerie, you know, put your nice little cover up on, you know, have a little shoulder out. You know, it's, it's a lot of different ways 
you can sex it up and now you know feeling like all your stuff hanging out that was the whole meetup at gators um Again, I really wish we could have seen what trap bingo was because that sounds very interesting. I've never heard of trap bingo, so I mean, but it is what it is. So next we see Ariel and she is getting T.S. Madison ready for Dallas Southern Pride. Uh, Madison was hosting an event out there and Ariel was styling her. Now for Ariel's confessional look, she had a lot going on with this look. First, let me shout out to Ariel because she is a new subscriber to my channel and I am a subscriber of hers as well. Thank you so much, Ariel, for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. I am a new up and coming YouTuber, so thank you so much. I appreciate all the followers, all the subscribers. Please keep them coming, guys. I want you to grow with me on this channel. She had this short pink bob, which I love. Pink is my favorite color. She had on this choker that had her name on it, put another R in it. It would have been my name. Now, what really stood out to me, my eye just kept going to it, was this earring that she had up here. She had an earring up here at the top of her ear, and I was so distracted by it. For me personally, I just thought it was a little too big. It was just a little too big. For my liking, and it was a little bit smaller than, you know, she could have pulled it off. But it just, it, I wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. She also had on a top. Now, I can't describe the material. Um, it's not sequins, but it's like, it's not ruffles. But I've had a purse made of that exact material. And it's noisy. <laughs> You rub up on it, it's noisy. I did not like it. I, I just, I don't like that material. I like the color of it. It was like a, a light purple, iridescent type of purple, but I just, I, I just didn't like that type of material because I know that type of material. I've had that type of material and uh, I just, but overall, her look, her face was beat to the gourd, so I really liked her look, okay? So they're talking about Malaysia Booker, that incident, and Madison is talking about how she feels the girl should be uh, militant. She believes in weaponry, and you should have something on you to protect yourself. And I, you know, I kind of agree, you know what I'm saying? Me, anyone should, not just trans women gay men everyone should you know what i'm saying i am a single parent of two kids so i definitely feel like i need some protection i mean i could go out to a gun range and take up classes give me a little peace keep it in my purse you know what i'm saying a little pink pistol put in my purse if it comes down to it me and you boo boo i'm sorry it's going to be you so madison and ariel are also talking about the division within the lgbt community and they were saying how the gay boys don't like the trans women and the women don't like the trans women and ariel was like when a man is interested in a trans woman like there really isn't anything that a biological woman or cisgender woman can do about it. They have something that you don't have. So, I, I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Ariel was like, look, when a man see me, he don't see this tall woman. He see long legs, boo-boo, and that's what he like. And when he behind me, he ain't seeing no broad shoulders. He's seeing all that ass, and that's what he like. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, Ariel, tell him, Ariel. Then next we see Dior. He's showing up late. He shows up, and Maddie's like, look, you got three minutes to put that wig on. We can't curl it, style it, or nothing. So Dior is in his confessional look. I liked his confessional look. He was giving off very much trade. He had on this hoodie. He had this little beanie. It was red and white. Like, I like this look. I like his look in the confessional. But he was like, you know, I'm running late. I'm always late. Everybody knows I'm late. Look, now that's not a good look. So next thing you know, we see Madison and she is walking out with this very Versace-esque short suit, body suit, cat suit with this royal purple shawl train just 
blowing in the wind, giving very much so gone with the wind tease. Can you more tease? You feel it? Ariel, kudos. You did an amazing job designing that. Like, that was bomb. So then next we get to one of my favorite women, Miss Imani Van Zapp. And she is here to fix your shit. She talks about honorable mentions and Georgina. That's what she calls him, not Georgina. Georgina. She talks about how he's still boring, he's still using King Kane as a storyline, and we're basically over it. She also brings up Trey Howard. Now, I did forget to mention this in my last review. I really liked his confessional look with the Burberry-esque jacket. Maybe it was Burberry, I'm not sure. But it was, you know, it had a design, the pattern of Burberry, and then it had the white fur um, on the collar. Like, I was loving that look on him. And then he had, like, this tan shirt, the three chains, had a pink background. Like, it was really everything. I really like that look for Trey. So Imani was like giving him his props for the fashion show but then she was like next time try not to have it at a hole in the wall club because it cheapens your brand. I kind of agree with her because it does or it may make people look at you or look at your brand you know in a different light. You know, presentation is everything, first impressions are everything. So I kind of can see Imani's point on that. But then again, he's also a 22-year-old. He's not out here with, you know, all the coin right now. He did it on his own. He didn't go to daddy for any type of money. So, you know, he had to get what he can get. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let's not come down too hard on the boy. You know what I'm saying? He did what he could do, and I think it turned out great. And, you know, as you do things, you grow, you learn, you progress. So I'm pretty sure his next event will be bomb. Now we get to Imani's strongest and weakest people. So the strongest this week was my boo, Premier. Hello. She gave it to Premier because he was reading the girls. He was letting them know, boo boo. These is $800 shoes on. You could never. And the weakest was Ariel. So she gave it to Ariel because of Ariel's rant regarding the Malaysia Booker incident. And, you know, of course, when you're in the moment, you say hurtful things, you say angry things because you're just in that moment. You know what I'm saying? We all know she didn't mean it. She doesn't want to see people getting killed, especially by the police. People of color, we definitely do not want to see that. So we all know she said that out of anger, as we all say things like that out of anger. But, you know, Imani had a job to do, and she did it. That was Imani's take on the episode, and that was her letting people know how to fix their shit. So next we see Reese G and Antonio meeting up. Now... I have been hearing a lot of people saying Reese's wig was giving Lion King vibes. And I actually, I kind of like this look. I actually like that wig. I like that type of curl. I've worn that type of curl before. And maybe if he may have put like some moisturizer in it or something. I don't know. I liked it. I liked it. And you know the little red wig that he had on at the beginning? I kind of like that too. It was a step up from some of the previous wigs. So him and Antonio are meeting up. Reese had invited Ariel. She said Ariel was gonna bring someone and they're meeting up for Jack Reese. Reese then tells Antonio how Markel um, was pretty much shading him when he was with Carrie D. He showed Antonio a message that he sent to Markel and Markel basically let them on red. They get inside and we see Ariel walking up, long legs, yes, and she had Oliver Twist with her, yes! Oliver Twist from Chasing Atlanta. I love him so much. He is hilarious. He is so funny. He is a key key. So he came out with them. They're all just sitting around talking about game night. Antonio was going over everything that happened with him at Premiere. So then we get to Oliver's confessional. I loved his confessional. I loved everything about his confessional from his look to the read to the shade. I love the jacket. The jacket was also giving me Versace-esque vibes. 
the background was like a yellowish gold color like everything just went like it flowed and then of course he had to give shade to Antonio like I don't know who he is but he seemed like Reese's little lap dog I was like oh goodness he was giving props to Reese G and Ariel you know he was like these are two bad bitches you know and he was like if these two link up and become good friends, you know, that's going to be some big bad boss energy linking up. You know what I'm saying? And then he's like calling them the weather girls. I was like, oh my gosh. That's Oliver Twist for you. He's funny. He's stupid. He's hilarious. I love him. Next, we get to Ariel. Now, she has a performance for Dallas Southern Pride. And she is very much so done up. She's in this purple gown, like, well, it was like a jacket. It was a long jacket. She had these big, puffy shoulder things on her arms. I'm pretty sure she probably made that outfit. It's probably an amazing design. Reese comes backstage, you know, to wish her good luck. And Reese is telling her there's some bad vibes out there because... Reese tried to give Markel a hug, and Markel was basically shading her, gave him a look, and it was just, you know, Reese could tell, okay, something's off. This is what Carrie was talking about. So, you know, Reese just gave Ariel the heads up. I love, love this look on Reese G. Now, he has on some blue jeans and this glitter shimmery top. If you look closely, you can see he had like a Chanel pin on the shirt. I like this look. He had no wig on. It just says shaved head, a big face. I like this look. I would actually rock this look. I rocked this type of look before plenty of times. I used some tight jeans. I used some cute heels and a nice little top. So this outfit, this fashion was actually nice. Everybody's coming in. Dior and his whole gang came in, gang, gang, you know, with the fashions and all that stuff. Markel comes in. Markel talking about he wasn't on the guest list. He ain't had no money. I'm like, well, ain't you supposed to be Miss Mr. Money Bags? Like you've written these books, you moved into this new place, but you ain't got money to get into the club. You can't pay the cover charge. So then next we see Ariel coming out. She's doing her performance. You know, she's strutting in there. You know, the slow strut. And she is vibing off of Beyonce. You, you, you know, Ariel's just doing her thing. You know, this prancing and gliding across the room. You know what I'm saying? People are coming up with a little money in the shirt. <laughs> you know? Dior and his boo walks up with a little change in now. Now, Markel said he had no money to get in the club or whatever. He said he wasn't trying to pay to get in, but he walked up. He put a little fun man on her outfit. I'm like, well, where he got that money from? The show's over. The performance is over. Everybody's outside. Dior and Reese are talking. Reese wanted to get Dior's take on everything. He talks about Markel and Markel's energy. So Oliver was like, look, he right over there. Let me just go get him so y'all can talk this whole thing out. So Oliver's like, friend, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm like, boy, you better stop with the mess. So Markel and then King Kane, everyone comes outside. So now everyone's outside in a circle. Markel and Reese are talking. Next thing you know, Markel says, Why don't you tell Oliver what you said about him? Reese said, What? What? What you talking about? And Oliver's like, Look, don't put me in this. This ain't got nothing to do with me. Markel trying to deflect. You know, people do that when they get caught up in a lie or when they ain't got no comeback, nothing to say. Then they want to, you know what I'm saying, throw something else in there. So Reese was like, Okay, he's carrying. He is carrying. <laughs> He carried. Markel was like, ooh, you just learned that word. So then Reese come back with, well, I may have just learned it, but you spelled it wrong in your last book. And now that struck a nerve with Markel because the rest of the boys was like, ooh. And you know what I'm saying? When people do that, you get embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? You get caught up in your feelings, and so you react. So that's what made him react. As soon as Reese came back with the rebuttal, 
You spelled it wrong in your last book. That struck a nerve with Markel and he reached out. Now, he didn't touch Reese. Now, they played the, re the replay. They, they ran it back and then played it again. He almost got Reese. He was like, right here. He didn't really connect. He was right here. <laughs> Baby, I don't care if you connect or not. If you come up in my vicinity, if you come up over here in my circumference, You know what I'm talking about? Like, period. Who is you? Or what you been in my face? And baby, we better be glad you didn't connect. They show Oliver in a confessional talking about what's up with this mush and stuff. If you want to fight, let's fight. But if you remember on Chasing Atlanta when Jatuan and Oliver got into it. Jatuan was all up in his face, all up in his vicinity. And didn't Jatuan mush him? And did Oliver do anything? No. He came out with a zap song. He's like, I'll zap your ass, but you ain't zap his ass, though. But it's cool, that was cute. I just had to point that out that you acting all like uh, you rope it so. But you ain't, you ain't, you ain't had that same energy though. You ain't had that same energy that was just hard. Markel starts to walk away. Next thing you know, he walking in. He throws his cup of ice, his drink over his head. The ice comes and it hits the guys in the back. Whoa, 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 whoa. It was just, I'm like, whoa, Markel, really? So Ariel comes out, the, the whole fight is over. She comes out, she's this cute little red dress and... Um, Reese is telling her what happened, saying I missed your whole performance because of this. I saw people saying Reese lied to Ariel, saying he missed her performance because of the whole scene Markel, but really he missed her performance because he was talking to Trey, which Reese said in his confessional that he was talking to Trey, so he missed Ariel's performance. But, but. I peep everything. I peep everything. And during Ariel's performance, you can see Reese G in the front filming Ariel. He was in the front filming Ariel. I see the little shimmery shirt. I see the shade head. It was, it was Reese G in the front. Look. So, how did he miss it? I'm not understanding. How did he miss it? I don't know. I don't know, child. But anyway, that was the episode. It was crazy. A lot was going on. Next week looks even more crazy. Markel is stirring up some more mess. He's trying to throw chairs. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Like, the season is just getting better and better. Every single episode. And baby, I am here for it. So, if you guys enjoyed this review, please hit that thumbs up button. If you want to leave a comment, if you want to give me props on this review, please feel free to do so down below in the comment section. And if you are not a fly girl or a fly guy yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel. You guys can also follow me and add me on Instagram and Snapchat at madam underscore butterfly. All right, guys. Until the next time, please remember, stay focused, stay laughing, stay yourself, stay fly.